Hey, what's up, Stringlings? Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've actually been asked to review this, the Donner P08 podcasting microphone. Let's check it out. So Donner, generally, when they ask me to review things, they send me pedals or, or guitars, um, and I, I love doing it. And uh, so it's a little bit of a departure for me having to uh, take a look at a piece of audio equipment that's not a guitar. Uh, typically, um, I do more of the musical stuff because that's my forte. That's what I'm good at, that's what I know. And there are lots of people out there who do reviews of this kind of equipment. But I thought this would be really cool because I'm always looking for ways to get better, more professional sounding audio into my videos for you guys. So this is actually kind of a, a a cool thing and they sent this along. Uh, I will tell you this microphone is not available uh, from Donner in Canada either through Amazon or through the Donner Canada website. You can only get it from Amazon in the US. So that's a quick note. However, I ordered it and it arrived in less than a week. So we still have really fast uh, shipping times and the thing about Donner as you'll probably know by now uh, they're very affordable and very, very uh, high value equipment. So this, I think, listed somewhere around $70 US. I think at the end of the day with shipping and everything else, uh, came in about $130-ish dollars Canadian, maybe $135. Still very affordable. And here's why. In addition to the microphone, which is here, as you can see, uh, and it's a substantial microphone. Let me just take this off for a second here see it yeah, there so this is the microphone itself uh, and it is a pretty directional cardioid microphone but in addition to the microphone uh, they also include a um, one of these a windscreen they also include a little carrying case a 10-foot cable the shock mount and a separate uh, stand clip so this one actually if you can see this part actually screws onto the base of the microphone itself, and then this one screws onto the stand. Now it's very important that you recognize or understand that this cap is different from the cap that's on the, or the thread that's on the shock mount. So they're, they're a little bit different, uh, but this would just screw on and, oh, I got this really tight, there we go. And this is the adjustable part. Um, I have the usual, clip that goes onto this microphone stand. It does not come with the microphone stand, by the way. Um, but you can see this little brass fitting that's in here. That is a fitting that I had to buy on Amazon. I think you get a pair of them for about $7. Uh, and they just screw into your fitting, whatever it happens to be, and that will uh, adapt it to the mic stand. So really easy solution. It doesn't ship with a mic stand. It does ship with, uh, it does ship with a pop filter. Uh, which is again very cool. Quick note as I was testing this out, the pop filter uh, clamp is a little bit too small for my mic stand, so uh, you'll you might need to get uh, either a, a different filter if you're using this kind of mic stand, or what I typically do is I just clamp it right onto my desk, and then you know it sits there and stops your P's and T's from uh, overwhelming your microphone, like that. Okay, so some of the features, um, where did my instruction sheet, there we go. Some of the features, it, it comes with a manual, it's a two page manual, which is not terribly detailed. Uh, it basically says, step one, plug it in, step two, sing, and then step three, use the switch if you need to. I'll explain the switch in a minute. Uh, step four, put the pop filter on it. Step five, line up the plug, which comes after step one somehow. Uh, so it's not really steps, it's just advice on how to use it, which is, I, I guess that's useful. Um, it has the layout of the polar response. Where's my, right there. Which is an almost exact replica of the inside of my head. I don't know how they got that, but there it is. Uh, but not a lot of information here. Basically, it's pretty straightforward. 
Uh, the microphone does not need phantom power, but if you put it on, it helps to clean up the signal a little bit. Make sure that on your audio workstation, you're using uh, the right um, the right sampling rate because it can get a little bit of pop and crackle. Uh, and I'm going to test this out right now. So this little switch is a low pass filter. What happens when you, we, we have what's called the proximity effect, which is when you're closer to a microphone, it picks up more of the low frequencies in the sound versus when you're farther away, it picks up more of the high frequencies. So if you're close enough to get this mic to work at its best, you're likely going to find that is very deep. Um, I don't mind that. I'm actually going to show you how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a desktop view. I'm going to use the windscreen because I've found this works better. This is a very directional mic. So it's not a, uh, it's not a condenser mic. It's a, it's quite directional. Actually, you've got to be right in front of it. Um, and it is a lower, um, a lower volume mic than these pencil mics that I have from newer. Um, these ones are kind of neat because they have a, a replaceable capsule on the top. So you can, you can change the type of microphone that it is. Most of what you're hearing right now in this part of the video is actually coming through my lapel mic. Okay. So that's most of what you're getting. What we're going to do is I'm actually going to just give you a little bit of a sampling via, uh, I'm using Adobe Audition right now, um, as opposed to Reaper. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we get this thing to sound as good as we can get it. So I'm going to put this filter back on the mic and we're going to give this a try. So now I have the mic set up. I'm actually going to increase the, oops. I'm actually going to increase the volume of this channel considerably, as you can see. And uh, I think you can hear what I'm saying when I talk about the um, the low pass. I'm quite close to it right now, which is great for recording. This is the same sound, but a little bit lighter, right? So I've basically filtered out the low frequencies and here I've added them back in. So I like that sound. That's just me. Um, to give you an idea of what we're looking at in terms of volume, as you can see, I've already turned the volume on the track up 15 decibels. And the input on my interface, which is a Scarlett Solo from Focusrite, is sitting at about, uh, about 1 o'clock. So it's, it's up fairly loud as well. Um, so when we... Oh, I don't know what that was. <clears throat> When we uh, take a look at the recording itself, yeah, when we take a look at the recording itself, we're going to find that there's a little bit of um, space here. There's a lot of headroom. What ends up happening, though, is if we pause this for a second, add on the second track, and now we get quite a bit more kind of gusto to it. There's a little bit of hiss that you can hear. That is just the nature of the beast. We're in a fairly echoey room to begin with, but it's really very quiet. It's a very quiet microphone. And you can take this sound, and I'm just going to show you what the difference is. Uh, bear with me for a second. I'm going to set up another clip, and you're just going to be able to see what it looks like when I increase the volume on the individual waveforms. This is a waveform clip, and as you can hear, I'm going to boost up the volume on the waveform itself and give it a listen and see if you can tell the difference. I think it's pretty obvious that you can tell the difference, but I haven't put any effects on this other than just boosting the volume. So there you have it. I think you can tell just from that little bit of recording that um, you know there's there's quite a bit of headroom. Um, the real trick to getting this microphone to really speak as a uh, as a recording microphone for podcasting is I think getting getting reasonably close um, and really kind of leaning in and letting the mic do the pickup from here a little bit farther back it's not uh, it's not a room mic so you're not going to get a lot of, of distance from it uh, it's designed for podcasting it's designed for this kind of proximity so I think that's probably a good thing right uh, we don't want it to be um, we don't want it to be kind of uh, hot rotting your signal, right? We don't want a lot of clipping. Uh, but even 
going in very quietly and boosting the signal after the fact. Uh, it's very, very clean. It's very, very quiet. And it's very receptive to all of the nuances in the voice. So I think this is a, this is a great purchase uh, for anybody who's looking to get started in, um, in podcasting. I have not tried this on an amplifier. Maybe one of these days I'll get it on this, um, on this bandit and we'll see, uh, how it stacks up against, let's say an SM 57 or something. Uh, I'd like to try the Neewer against it actually as well. Um, in just a kind of a head to head shootout. I only have one input on my interface, so I can't really do a, a switch back and forth between the two microphones, just between the lapel mic and whatever's going into the interface. Uh, I would like to get these pencil mics up on the ceiling. And if there's a little bit of echo in here, you'll you'll notice there's not any uh, wall treatment of any kind. I need to get some corner treatments in here just to cut down on the echo. It's a fairly small space uh, and half of it is cut off by umbrella lights uh, on the other side. So there's not a ton of echo, but there's just enough that you can, you can kind of hear it. So anyway, that's those are just room things. Uh, I think this is a fantastic microphone. If you're doing any kind of uh, podcast or video work, I'm going to be using this a lot on reaction videos uh, and review videos for um, for songs coming up because it's just that good. Uh, I like it actually a lot um, because it doesn't pick up any ambient room noise. Uh, this filter does filter out quite a bit of volume, uh, so you do have to get a little bit closer, which is fine. I'm a cuddler. <laughs> so anyway, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so if you like this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. And uh, I would really appreciate it if you would consider becoming a member of my channel. If as a member of the channel, you get a few perks, including priority requests for uh, new review videos for music, which who doesn't want a priority request? Uh, we're not able to push out as many videos as I'd like because uh, I have to make money doing other things. So the more membership we can we can build up here, the more I can deliver content on a more regular basis. I want to thank Donner for sponsoring this video, and I want to thank you for watching it, and I hope you have a fantastic day.